Well, here's the question. What opportunities are there for disabled actors if the able-bodied take disabled roles? As it happens in the case of Eddie Redmayne, it would be hard to have been substituting him because he had to play Stephen Hawking before he was struck by motor neuron disease as well as after. But the point stands. And joining me now in the studio is the film critic for The Hollywood Reporter, Leslie Felperin, and from Los Angeles, the actor RJ Mitty. He, like his character in hit US TV series Breaking Bad, has cerebral palsy. And RJ Mitty, uh, just tell us a little about your career and how, you, how difficult it was for you to get into acting and to get into a, a top job. Well, see, this was the thing is, it, is, yes, it was difficult, but it wasn't. This job kind of picked me. I didn't really pick it. I started working in the industry. I moved to Los Angeles when I was about 12, 13 years old because of my little sister, actually. And if you move to Los Angeles and you don't go to school and you don't join a gang and you don't act, which are all the same thing, you're not going to really meet any people your own age. So I, I started doing this to meet kids my own age and about Six, seven months later, I auditioned for Breaking Bad, and I booked Breaking Bad. And it, it gave me a career, and it gave me an opportunity to bring light to, to subjects like this and, and to disabilities that need to be heard and to show people how normal a disability really is. Yeah. And do you, when you see an able-bodied actor playing a disabled character, I don't know if you've seen the Eddie Redmayne film, I don't know if you've seen the theory of everything, uh, for example. I mean, what do you think? Do you think that's a a job stolen from someone else? Or do you think, wow, that's a brilliant piece of acting? No, I, I haven't seen the film yet. I, um, but I don't think it's a job stolen. And this is the reason why I say this. It, it, is in this industry, a job is never stolen. If you have and you're able to work in this industry, th that's, already, you're, that's already an amazing feat in itself. This industry is a very ruthless and, and hard to break into. And there's so so many people coming into this industry that it, it, it jobs fill up and yes it is not always what i want to see when i see an able-bodied character in a non in, in a disabled role but i think it's important to show people and to give someone an opportunity that's never lived that life that's never lived through those eyes and i think it's important to show people real people on television and film and the more we do this, and, and television has changed a lot in the last 10 years, and, and in the last 20 years, it's, it's, it's 180. Yeah. Yeah, that's but I think it's important to show people with disabilities on television and film, and I, disabled or not disabled, I think everyone has an opportunity, and everyone should be given that opportunity to audition for a role, no matter who you are. Let me put, a point, put the point to Leslie. What do you think is going on here? I mean in the casting of able-bodied characters in disabled parts. What, what are the Hollywood studios thinking? Well, I think there's understandable disgruntlement historically for years about the, you know, Othello being the classic case of, of white actors playing black roles. And we've moved on beyond that and we, we don't, that, that seems like an embarrassment unless you're doing it for very specific reasons. It's really just not, not acceptable now. I think probably if we were, they were making Gandhi now, they wouldn't cast someone like Ben Kingsley. They would find an Indian actor. Because they've seen there's a, a large enough pool of very competent actors from that ethnicity and from that background who could do that part. When we come to Disabled, I think it's, a, it's you know, this is sparked in part, you know, because it's a, suddenly it's a very visible character. Eddie Redmayne just won an award for it. But it's, it's smart, you know, there, there's a kind of movement for, you know, identity politics to, to take up there this debate. And I think much. that's very valid. Having said that, the pool of competent actors who also have that disability is much narrower than when we're talking well, about... Well, there the are very, very many fewer disabled people, so yes. there's going to be a smaller... It's going to not have the same thick market, and you're probably going to have less superstars to choose from, I Well, suppose. not exactly. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. The market for disabilities is actually massive. Everyone in their own right has a disability, and that's what people need to be aware of. And when you get down to, to, to racial and color issues versus disability, that you're, they're two very different aspects. But the one thing that disability has that racial issues don't is disability affects every race, every religion, every walk of life. So that's, I find that it's more acceptable for able body role versus when you have someone playing black or you have someone playing whatever, I find people are more accepted to see a non-disabled playing a disabled 
But I find what the issue that it gets down to is an accurate and honest portrayal mm-hmm. of what that disability means to so many millions of people. But I, I take your point, but at the same time, I mean, when you, you said before about seeing through somebody's eyes, that unless you've lived that life, you know, you, how can you portray that role accurately and believably? I mean, the whole po- essence of acting is to use the other imagination, that, that gift that you have, and to be able to kind of ima- imagine yourself into the skin of someone else, you know, whatever the color of the skin is, and wh- in, wh- whatever the disability that is. I take your point that you know, there's, there's a lots of different ranges of disabilities, but for a part as specific as this one, I mean, this was all sparked off by an article in The Guardian recently about you know, it's, it, how wrong it is for Edward Mayer to, to, to play this part. Well, the, the chances of finding an actor of competence enough to play who has that kind of motor neuron disease to play Stephen Hawking are quite small. And so and disabilities are very specific yeah. things, you know. So, I mean, it, 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 there's a slightly invisibility about it, which makes it much more challenging. RJ, I mean, obviously there are lots of biases in the film industry, aren't there? I mean, I'm, I'm struck. I wonder whether you think you've got some of your parts because you're a very good-looking guy. And is that, is that another bias of the, the film industry that basically... For example, ugly people basically find it very hard to get good roles, don't they? Maybe. Isn't that right? It, it, it's hard to get a role in this industry no matter what, disabled or non-disabled, no matter who you are, no matter where you are. There's always someone better looking. There's always someone with a, with, with a better disability. There's always someone <laughs> that has something that can one-up you. But what we, it gets back to, and I like that you use the word confidence. When you have someone with a disability, they, people don't normally have a lot of confidence. I don't have a lot of confidence. I don't, I don't feel that I do, and I don't think that I do. But that's what happens is when you had something and someone has been working so hard for one thing, and they finally achieve that, and then they got to jump to the next thing. And I think it wears on that confidence. And I find people need to be more uh, self-assured of who they are in this industry, and that is a very big factor in the, the acting world, is confidence, because confidence means everything. Confidence allows you to get in front of a crowd. Confidence allows you to get in front of a camera. People that don't have confidence, you, you'll you dwindle, and I find we RJ? need to instill confidence into more people. RJ, if you don't have confidence, you're, you're a very yes. good actor, because you've disguised that well tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> Leslie, thank you too.